Hi everyone, if you're new, welcome. My name's John and in this channel, you can practice your listening with quizzes and clear natural English. <clears throat> My throat's okay. There's a list of keywords and phrases in the description. Use that if you need to. And today we're talking about pranks and we're starting right now. Okay, next question. So firstly, what's the difference between a prank and a joke? A joke can mean so many different things, but usually we think of word jokes, a joke that you can tell other people. Whereas a prank is often known as a practical joke, like playing a trick on somebody. So while they can sometimes mean the same thing, they also have different uses. So just remember that pranks are always physical, not word jokes. So some pranks are mean. It depends what you're doing to the person but it doesn't have to be. In fact, I remember a saying, it's only a good prank if everyone is laughing at the end, which means the person that is being pranked as well. Now you might agree with that, you might not, but I think it's a nice way of looking at it. Don't be mean. The most common day for pranks and tricking people is April 1st, also known as April Fool's Day. The fool being the person who has been tricked. Traditionally, you're only supposed to trick people on April Fool's Day until 12 o'clock, so only in the morning. But a lot of people tend to forget about that rule and pranks go on throughout the whole day. There have been some great and very famous April Fool's jokes that have been played on many people. And I think the best two examples come from the BBC, the UK TV network. In 1957, the BBC reported a fake news story on April 1st as a way to prank everybody. They showed some footage of farmers in Switzerland collecting spaghetti from a tree. And they were talking about how the spaghetti harvest, the crop, was doing really good this year. They were basically saying that spaghetti grows on trees. And it became famous, so many people fell for this. They had calls from watchers all around the world. Some saying, I didn't know that. And others saying, what are you talking about? This is nonsense. But yeah, a very famous April Fool's. In 2008, they also released another fake documentary about flying penguins, which was also talked about quite a lot. Now, because the BBC is very big and these April Fool's jokes were on the news, instead of being called tricks or pranks, they were also called a hoax. Now, a hoax is like a trick, but the meaning of it is like it was a lie made on purpose. The word hoax is used on the news and in politics quite a lot. If somebody's been lying about something, trying to trick the public, good to keep in mind. Okay, we've mentioned pranks, jokes, and gone into hoaxes as well a little bit, but now let's test your listening. First question, who did I say should be laughing at the end of a good prank? Everybody. Oh, how wholesome. Second question, true or false? Traditionally, on April Fool's Day, pranks should not start until the afternoon. I don't know, don't ask me. That was false. They should only go until the afternoon, then they should stop. And third question, what is a hoax? Try and think of the meaning in your head or say it out loud. Even better. A hoax is a big lie told to lots of people that has been made on purpose. Okay, let's move on to some pranks from my childhood. When I was, I think, 12 years old, I went on a school camp with my friends. And at that time, we really enjoyed playing pranks on each other. There were 10 of us, 10 boys sleeping in a tent, and we were saying that the first person who falls asleep is going to get pranked. We said it out loud to each other. The first person who falls asleep is going to get toothpaste squirted into their mouth while they're asleep. I know it's not a very clever prank, but we were 12. So because of this, because the idea was shared, none of us went to sleep. <laughs> we were all too scared to be the first person to go to sleep. And then the next day when the teachers wanted to do camp activities with us, we were all just too tired. I also remember playing a prank on my friend while I was at university. We were housemates, not roommates, different rooms. Housemates, same house. Each day I would, this might sound a little creepy. Each day I would go into his room and I would 
just move a few of his things, like just a little bit. If there's something on his shelf, I just moved it maybe a couple of centimeters along. And I did this with a few things each day. It was very subtle because from just one day, it was very hard to notice that anything had moved. But I did it each day, moving things a little bit more each time. And I remember one day he just said, okay, that's enough. Who's been moving my stuff? Fun times. If you'd like to see more examples of pranks, I really recommend the TV show Friends. There is an episode all about practical jokes between some of the characters. Rachel teaches Ross's son, Ben, some practical jokes like switching the salt and the sugar and putting plastic wrap on the toilet seat. Use your imagination. It's a great episode of a great show and I always recommend it to my friends who are learning English. So if you haven't seen it, you should check it out. Okay, time out. Last round of questions. Here we go. Here we go. Why were my friends and I scared to go to sleep? Because the first person to go to sleep was going to get toothpaste in their mouth. Question five. Why did I say that my trick on my housemate was subtle? It was subtle because it was hard to notice. And last question, which TV show did I recommend? Friends, of course. How did you do today? If you didn't do as well as you hoped, please check the words and phrases in the description below. Click on the timestamps for any words you didn't know to get more out of this episode. And if you found it useful or enjoyed it, please show some love. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.